protein pancakes, um, organic bagel, two slices of cheese, four eggs. And I'm using a little bit of um, allulose maple syrup. Can a huge protein-rich breakfast help with weight loss and muscle building? Well, there's some interesting science to show that starting your day with a big breakfast can help with getting you out of a weight loss plateau and finally seeing your body fat percentage drop. At the end of this video, I will also discuss how to implement this if your goal is to gain muscle while reducing body fat. Now, I'm a primary care uh, physician and part of my day job is running a medical weight loss clinic where I always take a very detailed dietary history with every new patient. One pattern that I have consistently observed in a very large percentage of my patients looks sort of like this. I'm not very hungry in the morning, so I'll just have a you know, cafe latte and something small. And then I have my first meal around 11, 12, sometimes you know, one o'clock. Then in the afternoon, my appetite goes crazy. I'm getting really hungry. And dinner will be my definitely largest meal of the day and I don't make good choices. So in an effort to lose weight, most people will then decrease their lunch to maybe just a salad and, and hoping this make thing, will make things better. But unfortunately, it does not. Observational studies show that eating a large breakfast decreases overeating later in the day and potentially increases satiety, so feeling of fullness, leading to weight loss. In a 2020 publication in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, the researchers found that participants burned, on average, 2.5 times more calories after breakfast, and this is regardless of the uh, size of their meals, than after dinner. Now, what they refer to here is called diet-induced thermogenesis. It just, just means that, you know, uh, by eating the food, how much energy do you burn you know, processing this food, right? And while we're not talking about a large number of total calories here, it's interesting that the breakfast meal resulted in a much larger energy expenditure than the dinner. But how does this translate into weight loss? Well, uh, there was a study published in the Journal of Obesity that compared two groups of people on isocaloric diets of 1,400 calories. So they both ate exactly the same thing totally for the day. But one group had a very big breakfast and a small dinner. The other group had a small breakfast and a big dinner, right? Lunch was about the same in both groups. And interestingly, the group that ate the big breakfast lost 2.5 times more weight than the group that ate the big dinner over a three months period. Now, the authors note that although fasting glucose, insulin, and ghrelin, hunger hormone, right, were reduced in both groups, fasting glucose, insulin, and insulin resistance decreased significantly to a greater extent in the big breakfast group. Mean triglyceride levels uh, decreased by 33.6% in the big breakfast group, but increased by 14.6% 14, 14 in the big dinner group. Same food, right? Oral glucose tolerance tests uh, led to a greater decrease of uh, glucose and insulin in the big breakfast group. In response to uh, meal challenges, which I did at the end of the study, the overall daily glucose, insulin, ghrelin, and uh, mean hunger scores were significantly lower, whereas mean satiety scores, so fullness, were significantly higher in the big breakfast group. Now, I started increasing the size of my breakfast after really experimenting with a weekend cheat meal in the morning. I was actually planning to do a whole cheat meal day. But I noticed that after I consumed a much larger breakfast than usual with a high protein content, that I was significantly less hungry throughout the rest of the day and, and just much less tempted to eat any junk food that I had actually planned to eat that day, even you know, because it was a cheat day. So if you are currently struggling with your weight and your pattern is, as I described earlier, with a very small breakfast uh, late in the day and then a very large dinner, then switching to a large protein-rich breakfast, moderate lunch and a very small dinner and ideally a carbohydrate-free dinner may get you out of your plateau while you're actually feeling great and full. Please keep in mind that you should still eat about 200 calories under your BMR if you're trying to lose weight. Now, you can Google BMR calculator to do the math here. In general, breakfast should look sort of like this. 30 to 40 percent of your daily calories from this meal, from breakfast, 40 to 50 grams of protein, moderate carb and low fat. But it is also um, a good, but is this a good pattern if your goal is to gain muscle? Well, in my opinion, actually it is. You would still start with the 50 grams of protein for your breakfast. Um, I would have some of it coming from a protein shake that contains a mix of different protein powders with different absorption rates. I currently use a mix of a whey protein isolate, whey protein concentrate, and a casein protein in equal amounts. And um, after that, you should consume another three meals that successively become smaller. 
but each meal should prioritize lean protein, of course. Dinner can be in the form of a protein shake with the above uh, mixture of the three protein powders, right? Total daily protein intake um, should be between 0.8 to 1 gram per pound of body weight, given that you're healthy to do so. So you always have to check with your primary care physician. There are certain you know, conditions, uh, kidney disease and so on, where you can't eat a high protein diet. But if you're healthy, this is absolutely okay to do. And as I described in a previous video, if you want to if you want to boost muscle building more, then your protein shake following your workout and only that one should be consumed together with about you know six to ten grams of essential amino acids. And if your goal is to lose uh, body fat while gaining muscle, you should consider staying roughly one hundred calories uh, per day under your BMR. Right, so that's important. So I think, you know, this makes a lot of sense. You know, we're starting out with a bigger meal in the day. You feel more full. You're less tempted later on in the day to have high calorie foods and, and junk foods. And I think this works very well for most people. The um, you know key things to consider here is that you still want to sort of calculate the total calories coming in. You want to make sure your food is fairly clean. You want to avoid simple sugars and all these things. You want to have whole foods. You want to have um, sufficient protein and it can come from different sources. Just to make it easy, I usually go with um, uh, about 90 grams of protein total for my total needs in a day. So it's about half of the protein that I need daily coming from protein shakes. And I like the idea of having protein shakes with different absorption rates because it just keeps you, you know, keeps the protein available to you for much longer periods of time. So that makes actually a very big difference. Now, even if you're not trying to build muscle, uh, you should still optimize your protein. You know, you can go a little bit lower 0.6 to 0.8 gram per pound of body weight if you're healthy. Um, because again, protein keeps you full. It's very much involved in satiety. And one downfall that I see um, really all the time in, in patients that have, are struggling to lose weight is they do reduce their calories, you know, and they shorten their eating window more and more, which might be actually counterproductive. But as they decrease their um, calories coming in, they cut down protein a lot. And that's a big mistake. We should definitely decrease our carbohydrates and we should minimize our fats that are coming in. I always talk about having only good fats. So fats that are not coming from these uh, polyunsaturated fats from seed oil, you should avoid those. Those are not good. A uh, little bit of butter, a little bit of oil of oil and avocado oil. These are all fine. Um, but you should really minimize the total fat coming in. Remember, fat is nine calories you know, per gram. It's much more calorically dense than uh, protein is or carbohydrates even are, right? <clears throat> but this way, um, basically, you're having uh, low fat, you have high protein, and just moderate carbohydrates. The idea of having no carbohydrates for your last meal of the day is it really sets you up to go into your fat burning window overnight earlier. Another downfall, as I mentioned this earlier, is when people start out, well, I just have my coffee in the morning, I put some creamer in and a few other things. You're already at that point breaking your fast, right? If you wake up in the morning and you have your and you're not hungry, that's fine. I would always say wait about two hours before your first meal, maybe even three hours. That's fine. But then I would definitely have my breakfast. And again, I would make it a big breakfast. But if you have your coffee right when you wake up and you put some creamer in it that has a few calories, anything over about three to four calories will break your fast. Why is that important? Because as you're fasting, you're burning fat. As soon as you stop fasting by putting even three or four calories in the form of creamer or agave or, or something else in there, oat milk, fasting's done. And I, I'm really a big proponent of using this time period, these two hours, these two to three hours after you wake up to continue to burning fat. So I would not put anything in my coffee until your first meal, until your breakfast. And then it's fine. You know, then you're having calories anyway. It doesn't make a difference. But that's a few things. So, you know, I would not have any calories before the breakfast. I would have the breakfast about two to three hours after waking up, if that works with your schedule, of course. Um, I sometimes have to be in clinic early and I take my breakfast with me and I take a big breakfast with me. It's all doable. You know, you boil some eggs. I have some protein pancakes that I use and I'm going to show some uh, at the end of this video. I'm going to show my breakfast that I'm eating lately. This is just an example right now. And I can make this and take it with me as well. That's not a problem. It's just about, you know, planning your day. As I make my breakfast, and I always recommend to do this, you know, make the rest of your food for the day. So you're kind of planning out your day, you're structuring your day, you know what you're going to eat, you're not going to have any surprises later in the day, it will also save you money. You're not going to have to go to Starbucks or some restaurant that uses um, seed oils and some other crap and a lot of junk you don't want in there anyway. So I hope this was helpful. Um, again, this is something I think worth trying out if you're stuck, if you're trying to lose weight and you're stuck, I think this is a very good um thing to implement you know just changing the proportions of your food having much more food early in the day and then less later 
works for a lot of people. I've implemented this with many patients successfully. And I would love to hear from you if you're doing this, if this is working for you. So please subscribe and leave comments and questions. And I would love to read those.